All right, so I've made this video a few times already, so um, but I keep getting a bunch of questions asked about the transmissions and the video where I explained what was uh, what the transmissions are. Then I was just driving on the yard, so I never really got through many gears. And then the videos I'm on the road, I don't really explain it. So now I'm gonna do both i'll explain what's up and uh i'm on the road so i can run through the gears um so this truck has two transmissions and two shifters so the main transmission here and the auxiliary transmission there is the same with the sticks this is the six speed this is the four speed all right this one goes straight into the transmission. This one is to the main transmission. This one is um, hooked up by a linkage in the floor to another transmission that's mounted halfway back the truck. Um, and how this works is you think about it as six really big gears. One is crawling around the yard. Six is road speed, okay? Now, say if you're pulling Super Bs and you weigh 140,000 pounds, how do you get from one to six with that kind of weight? Well, you need more gears. So, the addition of an auxiliary transmission, now you have four different ways to be in each gear. So, if you want to go from one to two, now you can accelerate in four different gears before you shift to two. That way, your speed difference is very close, right? Instead of making a massive shift. Now, to shift from second to third, that's about 1,000 RPM on the tack. So if you were loaded, you're going from 2,000 to 1,000 RPM. Well, with an old mechanical engine like this, there's no power under 1,500. So you need more gears it's as simple as that the other thing is they overlap a lot so you don't hit all 24 gears um, in fact five four is faster than six three so when I shift from fifth to six I usually just throw it into sixth because actually if I go to six three I have to slow down to run the same rpm rather than from five four so that's kind of really weird about this transmission. Your big jumps for speed are in the low end. You've got all kinds of gears for running road speed, right? You can run any RPM you want, literally. But what that means is when you're taking off, um, you're probably gonna use at least the, the two, three, four on the auxiliary. For bobtailing, you can get away without shifting the auxiliary. You can just leave it in third and run. But I kind of like to run, I'll start in second first. Go one, two, three, four. Drop it to third. Catch third. Go to fourth. Up to fourth. Go to third. And then to fourth. And then I might just leave it in fourth and go five, four, six, four. Because those gears, as I said, they get closer together. And your RPM jump between 5 and 6, it's a lot smaller. It's like 500 RPM. Which, Bob Tailing, you can get away with that, right? So it's really not as complicated as you might think. And I know at the truck show, it was fun listening to people tell other people how to shift. And, and everyone saying the thing about putting your arm through the steering wheel. You, you don't. It's actually not hard to shift a two stick. And I know a lot of people won't say that because they want you to think it's hard and that they've got some sort of special skill. It's not hard. Okay, if you know how to find a gear, you know, it's not that hard. Um, spicer boxes do shift harder than eaten boxes. And that means that um, sometimes you just got to put it in gear. But um, the other thing is on the auxiliary, your, your speed differences are so small 
that within a couple hundred RPM, like literally 200 RPM, you can go from tickling a gear to shredding a gear when you're trying to find it. So it does take a light foot. And with a two-stroke, that makes it harder because the RPMs on a two-stroke are way more um, snappy than, say, a cat would be. Um, I'd love to drive this with a cat just to see how much easier it is. But from my experience, um, it would be a lot easier just in, in general for shifting. So that's it. There's really no magic to it. I'm, I'm going to flip the camera up, up to uh, my window here and then do some driving stuff where you can see the sticks. Um, I tried to mount it in a different place this morning, and um, I'm just using masking tape to hold my phone onto place. It's really not a fancy setup, so it actually fell down pretty quickly. So I need to figure out a different way to mount the camera for driving videos, but I think for the shifting, I can find an angle that'll actually work.